Hello, my fellow forgiven sinners. Grace and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. How do you get right with God? Every belief system tries to answer this question. In fact, even many of those uh, ideologies that are not concerned with a relationship with a divine being still want to answer this question because it is the essential question. Yeah? How do you live the right way? How do you be the right kind of person? How do you aim your life in the right direction? According to the words of Jesus, who is God come to humanity in history, there are only two strategies to figure this out. And only one of those strategies gives us the results we're looking for. Today, we're looking at Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. And we'll talk about the slavery way to God, the adoption way to God, and the results of those two paths. We've spoken on this subject in the past, but it bears repeating. The slavery method for getting right with God sees our relationship with him as an employer-employee kind of relationship. God is your boss. You see your life as a machine, and you Put in the right actions into it, and then you will get the right results out of it, right? It's a business relationship with God. It says, if I do the right things, if I do the things I'm supposed to, then God must give me the results I'm looking for. This is the essential human religion. Every human invented answer to the question comes down on this side of slavery. Consider Bud Buddhism's Eightfold Path of Enlightenment or Islam's five pillars, or the way many within the Judeo-Christian morality view the Ten Commandments. These religions all claim that the path to God is you accomplishing certain tasks and avoiding others. If you do the right thing and avoid the wrong things, you will be right with God, is the idea that they say here. This mentality bleeds into many secular ideologies, too. Consider America's pull yourself up by your bootstraps, right? Or the way many people view their politics, as if, if we can just get this right man, this right person into the office, then life will be the way it's supposed to be. All of these teachings proclaim this simple, same message. You do the right things, and that puts you on the right path. The adoption way is the second one we're going to look at. It's what Paul explains to us in Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 to 7. He writes there, When the time had fully come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under law, that we might receive the full rights of sons. Notice how Paul says we become right with God. He doesn't point to anything we do, does he? Instead, he points to what God has done in Jesus Christ and how he adopts us into his family through Jesus. And just as, as we had nothing to do uh, with, which, which, with which family uh, that you were born into, so Paul proclaims that God has adopted us into his family without our actions, without our effort. Now, according to Paul, God sets this plan in motion at the proper time. He sends Jesus Christ, his son, the second person of the Trinity, into humanity so that he might take our place. Jesus was born at the perfect time in human history for God to accomplish his plan. It was the perfect time so that God's message, the message of the gospel, might spread far and wide. It was also the perfect time for Jesus to be born so that he might perfectly fulfill all of the Old Testament prophecies about who the Messiah would be and what he would do. Paul explains that Jesus is born into our spiritual situation, but he obeys God's moral laws where we would break them. He is perfect where we would miss the mark. And through this, Jesus earns us a place in God's family so that we can become sons of God. Now, there's no need here to get bent out of shape because of the masculine-specific son there instead of a neutral child. Uh, Paul does specifically mention son here uh, because in that culture, the sons were the heirs. And that is the point Paul makes here. We are children of God with full inheritance 
rights. We are full members of the family. And so the adoption way to God proclaims that we don't set ourselves on the right path by our efforts, but instead God sets us on the right path by his effort and his mercy. The results, according to scripture, are clear. The slave way gets us nowhere. And consider how judgmental uh, the slave way makes us. For example, if you, if you base your self-value on living a certain way, like obeying uh, one set of commandments rather than another, how are you inevitably going to look at people who don't obey the same commandments you do? You're going to have every reason to look down on those people, to be disgusted by them maybe even, or even to hate them. This, is a, uh, this was the clear issue with the Pharisees in Jesus' day. They believed they were better than everyone else because they obeyed certain laws and those other people did not. But Jesus makes it clear that it was the Pharisees who were in the wrong. Their hard work and their effort only brought pain and damage to the people around them in their lives. In the end, they weren't actually following God's law for their lives. Not to mention how incredibly unfair this slavery method is. I mean, after all, a child can't follow the eightfold path of enlightenment. And, and there are many disabilities that would render a person totally unable to, to follow Islam's five pillars. The slavery method is extremely judgmental and exclusionary. If the slave way does not lead you down that path, that path of self-righteousness, self-righteous judgment of other people, it'll, also, or it'll probably lead you the other way of doubts. Doubt about where you stand with God. Just as a slave has no permanent place in the, in the master's family, just as an, an employee has no permanent place in their boss's family, so you can never be certain that you belong to God, that you will be with God. You will never be able to, to know if you've done good enough, or if you've been obedient enough, or if you've been sincere enough. You will live forever wondering if you have earned your reward or if you have instead not done enough, or worse, earned punishment. But Paul writes to us here about the results of the adoption way. He says, because you are his sons, God sent the son of his son, sorry, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And since you are a son, God has made you also an heir. Here Paul explains that God has given us the spirit of his son so that we recognize that God is, is not our slave master, not our boss, but he is a good and gracious father, our father in heaven. And we are his family. When Paul speaks about the, the spirit crying out, Abba, Father. He uses Abba. That's the, the Hebrew word for Dada. It's, it's the first word that a little child would say when they're first learning to speak and they would want to refer to their dearly loved father. That is the relationship that we now have with God. We do not need to fear that, that God might thrust us out as a, if we're not good enough. We don't have to doubt whether we've truly measured up or not we can be fully confident that God has adopted us into his family. The adoption way gives us confidence that our lives are pointed in the right direction through Jesus, that we are right with God through God's son. And notice how this affects our view of other people, right? Whereas with the slave way, we look down on others who don't measure up to our obedience. With the adoption way, we find our self-worth in Jesus Christ in what he has done, in the relationship that God has brought us into, in the family that God has brought us into, through what God willingly did, what Jesus willingly did to bring us into that family. It doesn't depend on us. And so how do we look at people who aren't in Jesus like we are? It's not that we've accomplished something they haven't. We have no reason to look down on them. It's instead simply that God has granted us a great blessing and we naturally want to share that blessing with them too. Rather than look down on or hate other people, God our Father teaches us to love and help the other person. 
because that is what God has done for us. Now, some might say the adoption method won't uh, let people be as serious about doing good works. I've always loved it when people bring this up to me because it means I've accurately explained the gospel to them. But the logic there is that if people aren't trying to do good works to be saved, then they're not going to do them. Yeah. It's, again, what, what they're saying is that people will only do good if they are going to get something good out of it. Yeah. It's, it says they're only going to avoid evil if they're trying to avoid pain for themselves. Do you see the uh, implicit assumed selfishness of people in those, idea, in, in those ideas? But consider it this way. Who would work harder for, or who would you work harder for? Your boss or your dad? When it really counts, who are you going to take more risks for? Your boss or your dad? In the end, who do you care about more? Your boss or your dad? Now, I understand. Some people have a rocky relationship with their, their father. Some people have a great relationship with their boss. But in general, people understand that that familial relationship with your father means a lot more. And it is worth more effort. A deeper effort. So, if God is your boss, then ultimately the entire relationship with him depends mostly on God's stuff and how much of it he's going to give you. If, however, God is your father, then you have a relationship that goes far beyond what you can accomplish or how much blessing or lack of blessing God is giving you at the current moment. If God is your father, then you are an heir with Christ of eternal blessings and you have an eternal familial relationship that is so much more than material wages. So my beloved fellow children of God our Father, you're no longer a slave, you are a child of God. Jesus Christ has earned it for you. Therefore, let's, let's no longer waste our lives in the slave way, trying to build up our self-righteousness or losing ourselves in doubts. Let us instead live in the way Christ has opened for us, the adoption way, by which we cry out to the Almighty God in heaven as our dear Father, our Heavenly Daddy. Let us be confident of the inheritance that God has in store for us and let us live our lives now in step with God's will for us, his dear children. Amen. I say, I say, can't be that easy. And he said, he said, and no.